Hello, a warm welcome to you from SGT University. I am Dr. Meer Rizwan from the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences and today we will be learning about intravenous urography or IVU. This talk will cover the introduction to the intravenous urography or IVU procedure, something about the procedure itself and lastly examples of some abnormal findings which can be detected on IVU. It is a radiographic study of the renal parenchyma, pelvic alicial system, ureters and the urinary bladder with the help of an intravenous radio-opaque contrast material or dye. The other names of the study are intravenous pilography or IVP and excretory urography. The indications of the study are evaluation of renal function, hematuria, ureteric colic, recurrent urinary tract infections, suspected urinary tract pathology or any congenital anomaly, suspected urinary tract injury. There are also some contraindications to the study and these have been divided into absolute and relative contraindications. The absolute contraindications are history of any contrast allergy and renal failure, while the relative contraindications include hepatorenal syndrome, thyrotoxicosis, pregnancy and multiple myeloma. Now let's discuss the procedure of carrying out intravenous urography. The equipment needed for the study is a basic x-ray or fluoroscopy equipment plus a radiographic contrast material or dye. It is usually and iodinated contrast material and the two most commonly used materials are urographin which is a high osmolality contrast material and iohoxol or low osmolality contrast material. Low osmolality contrast material are usually preferred nowadays and we in our department also use the same. These have less chances of adverse reactions or contrast allergy than the high osmolality group. Coming to the patient preparation, history is very important, especially history of any contrast allergy in the past and history of any systemic illness like diabetes, multiple myeloma and thyrotoxicosis. The patient has to be fasting for at least 4 to 6 hours, but remember do not dehydrate the patient. Bowel preparation is very important as we do not want bowel gases to obscure some important findings. The serum creatinine levels of the patient should be within the normal limits, usually less than 1.5 mg per deciliter. The technique of performing IVU is a three-fold one. It involves a preliminary plane X-ray film or the KUB, the injection of a radiographic contrast material and lastly taking sequential x-rays of the KUB region. The preliminary film or the control film, also known as the KUB, is an anterior posterior radiograph of the kidney, ureters and bladder region. It is performed prior to the administration of radiographic contrast material. The next step is the injection of radiographic contrast material. Test doses were given in earlier times, however, nowadays these have been discontinued because the risk of adverse reaction is independent of the dose given. The usual dose is 1 ml per kg body weight. The last step is taking sequential x-rays of the KUB region after the administration of contrast material. So multiple films are taken starting with a 1 minute film also known as a nephrogram phase then a 5 minute film, then a 10 to 30 minute film known as a urethrogram phase, a full bladder film also known as cystogram phase which is usually taken at around 45 minutes or when the patient complains of full bladder and lastly a post voiding film. These are the basic radiographic films taken after the administration of contrast material. However, additional films can be taken or a modification of the procedure can be done 
depending on the indication and the patient. Now let's discuss each of these films one by one. The immediate film or the nephrogram phase is an anterior posterior or AP view of the renal areas to show the nephrogram that is opacification of the renal parenchyma. In this film, we should look for the size, outline, axis and the position of both the kidneys. As you can see in this film, there is faint opacification of both the kidneys. The next film is taken in the secretory phase which is around 5 to 15 minutes and in this film we look for the contour of both kidneys. We look whether the contrast is filling both the pelvic alation system or not and we look for any delayed film or absent filling. The next film is taken at around 30 minutes. It is known as the ureterogram phase. In this we look for any dilatation of collecting system or ureters and the evidence of any filling defect within the collecting system or ureters. The whole ureter is very often not entirely demonstrated in one single film because of the peristaltic wave. So we may have to look for other films as well. The next film is taken when the patient complains of full bladder that is usually around 40 to 45 minutes after the injection of contrast material. Look for bladder size and shape. Look whether the contrast is filling the bladder or not. Look for the bladder surface, whether it is smooth or irregular. And also look for any diverticulae, filling defect or prostate indentation in this film. Lastly, a post voiding film is taken, in which we look for any residual urine, as shown by the arrow in this film. And also look whether any contrast is left in the upper urinary tract which can be because of reflux or because of delayed excretion. Now let's discuss in brief the common findings seen in some of the pathologies on IVU. This is a plain KUB film and in this film we can see a well-defined radio opacity seen in the left renal region just in relation to the transverse process of the third lumbar vertebra. So this was a calculus in the left ureter. This is a case of renal tuberculosis in which we can see the whole of the right kidney is completely opacified. That is, it is completely calcified. We can also see faint opacification of the right ureter, which is very well seen in the lower ureter, indicating ureteric calcification. Remember, this is a film taken before the injection of contrast material. We may also come across some artifacts in case of a plain KUB film. And few of these artifacts are phalloprings, phleboliths, enteroliths, and surgical clips or staples. As you can see in this example, these are the phalloprings which may appear as radiodents, and these are the phleboliths these can be mistaken for calculi so be mindful of these artifacts coming to the kidneys the most common congenital anomaly of the kidney is the horseshoe kidney in which the renal tissue bridges across the midline and the lower poles of the kidney face medially giving what is known as the flower vase appearance as you can see in this picture the lower poles of the kidneys face medially and there is a renal tissue bridging the two sides together. This is a case of polycystic kidney in which we can see bilaterally enlarged kidneys spanning the height of more than three vertebrae. There is also calicial stretching and distortion due to the cysts. This is a case of a renal cell carcinoma in which there is mass at the lower pole of right kidney causing mass effect on the calicial system as well as distortion of the calices. The left kidney and the left caricial system show normal appearance. This is a case of pelvic junction obstruction of the right side and as you can see in this image there is dilatation of the right renal pelvis and the calices and no dye is seen passing distally into the ureter. This is a case of left-sided hydronephrosis there is dilatation of the left renal pelvis and the calices 
above and obstructing calculus which is seen here and of course this calculus has to be confirmed from the plain KUB film as well. The next example is a case of ureteric injury on the right side. This was a stab wound of right ureter and it shows extravasation of contrast material at the site of injury. This is a case of bilateral ureterocele. Ureterocele's are dilated intravesical portions of the ureters giving what is known as the cobra head appearance. This is a case of cross renal ectopia in which both the kidneys are seen on the left side and there is no shadow or contrast material in the right renal area. As you can see the right ureter coming from the left side and then crossing over to go to the right side and then going into the bladder. Now some examples of findings in a urinary bladder. We may see a filling defect in the bladder which can be because of bladder carcinoma as seen in this case there is an ill-defined irregular filling defect in the right lateral part of the bladder. So this was a case of bladder carcinoma. Bladder diverticulae may sometimes be picked up very well on IVU. These appear as outpouchings of bladder which are contrast filled. This was a case of bladder diverticulae. One of the appearances of a neurogenic bladder is an elongated bladder with an irregular or trabeculated outline giving what is known as the Christmas tree appearance. The enlargement of the prostate can also be seen very well on a full bladder film. As you can see in this case, indentation of the bladder base, the dark area here is the prostate and white area is the bladder. Of course, the distinction between benign and malignant pathology cannot be entirely made out on IVU and further investigations may be needed. There are many advantages of performing an IVU procedure like detailed anatomy of the collecting system can be seen for example in congenital anomalies. It can very well demonstrate major calcification and calculi. And also the procedure is quite affordable especially in a country like ours. Lastly the procedure also has its limitations and the first and foremost limitation is that it depends on the kidney function. It can be only performed in normally functioning kidney. Does not differentiate solid and cystic lesions. Requires contrast medium as we have discussed. Involves the use of radiation it may miss some small calculi and lastly inadequate bowel preparation may affect the quality of study. So today we covered intravenous urography and the next time we meet we will be discussing some common signs in radiology. Till then keep learning, keep growing, see you next time.